Hello, my friends, how are you doing today? I'm going to show you a super easy way on how to protect your images online. My name is Olivio. I'm a professional designer sharing my industry secrets with you. So maybe subscribe to my YouTube channel for free. So what I'm going to want to show you today are these kind of overlays that you know from stock pages where there's just this repeating information of the copyright holder. Now we're going to create that overlay, then I'm going to show you how to make a macro with this and then afterwards how to use this in a batch job so you can apply this to thousands of your pictures without any extra work. Also this time I want to ask you how important is it to you to protect your images online? One thing I want to point out before we get started is that this does not scale to the size of the picture. So if you want to export your pictures often in different resolutions, I would suggest you do the same thing three times for smaller resolutions, medium resolutions and high resolutions like for example the original file resolution. So I'm going to do one for a large resolution and the way we're going to start here is to go to file and new and then you want to set up a custom resolution here. So I'm going to go with 10,000 by 10,000 pixels simply so I have enough space. DPI 72. That's OK. Let's create this. So now we have a square canvas that is completely empty. Good. The first thing you want to do is to go to the rectangle tool and draw out a black rectangle. Right now it is white. So we go here to the fill color on the top left and set this to black. That is easy. And the only reason for that is that sometimes Affinity Photo doesn't line up everything correctly. So you might have one pixel gaps and this will just hide these gaps. All right, so we can hide that rectangle right now. And then what we are going to do is to draw out a second rectangle. The size right now doesn't matter uh, because we're going to resize that in a second. You want to zoom in here a little bit uh, so this is bigger on your screen. And then you can put in here any kind of text you like. The important thing is that the text is white like so when you write something let's say uh, my website for example you, let's push this a little bit smaller so it sits nicely in the center of our box you can also select the text layer and the rectangle layer that is surrounding our text together and then go up here to alignment and you want to click here on center and here on center and then apply so everything is in the middle Right. OK. Now, if you want to have this altering effect where this goes here and then it is here and then again up here, what you need to do next is you want to group these. So select both of these layers and go control G to group them and then hold your control key down and click and drag this over and snap it like so. And you want to do this three times. And then of course you can already imagine then in this case we are going to turn off the text. And also in this case we are going to turn off the text. And so you can see now we have this alteration. So next what we want to do is to select all four groups. So you select one hold shift and then click on the lower one. So you select all of these and then again Control and G on your keyboard. So now we have this group. You want to right click on the group and duplicate that group. And then again, right click on that group and rasterize that group, right? So this is a pixel layer now. The reason why we need a pixel layer is because now we are going to create a pattern from that pixel layer. For that, I'm going to zoom out, Control and zero on your keyboard, boom, like this. And then go here with this layer selected, the pixel layer we just created. Go to layer and then new pattern layer from selection like this. OK, so this is creating that, but we want to make this smaller like so. You can really go with any kind of size you want here. Experiment around a little bit with this. 
Uh, let's go like this and then also you can go here and turn this to the side if you hold your shift key this jumps in 15 degree iteration so you can go for example with 30 degrees like this and that already looks pretty good turn on the rectangle we created at the start this is in the background so this really covers everything in black so there's no chance there's going to be any white line the next thing we need to do is to export this file as a JPEG. So let's go here on export and then JPEG. You can see 10,000 pixels right now. High quality, as it says here, 85%. That's pretty good. Export it to a location that is safe. Store this where it can stay forever. And now here comes the macro part. Open up a file with the right resolution. Let's go with this one, for example, it's one of my pictures here. You can check the resolution under document, resize document. It's going to tell you 3,900 by 5,900. That is good for our 10K image. That's a good high resolution. So now we want to record our macro. For that, we are going to go to view and then to studio and then to macro down here. OK, so here come the macro steps. Click on this start recording and then you want to go to file and place. So let's select this file, open and then click once to place it over your file to center it. This is really important. You want to center it so it's not off in pictures who have other ratios. Go up here to alignment and click center and center here and then click on apply. So this is now centered in the image right good next step is going to be to set the blend mode to screen and then you can leave it like that but i find that to be a little bit aggressive so i would say let's set the opacity to around 25 percent so this is a little bit less obtrusive when people want to look at the picture so this is basically it you can now click on stop recording here and then you want to save this with this button here add to library and give it a descriptive name so you know what is going on call it copy 10k for example like this okay good so we have saved this now I will close this. I'm not going to save this with our overlay on it, right? So this doesn't have any overlay on it right now. So I'm going to show you now when I go here to new batch job, this is where you make the batch jobs. Now I can apply this to 100 pictures, 1000 pictures, 10,000 pictures, no problem. So go here to new batch job. I'm going to add this file. There we go. This is for the test. OK, then you want to go here where the available macros are. You want to scroll down and here you see the macro you have created copy 10k apply that that's pretty important so these are the applied macros just by highlighting them over here that doesn't anything you have to apply it so it's over here in that area another very important part is to select the output file format you want to switch this most cases over to jpeg not as a affinity photo file or any of these other files because if you want to use it online it has to be a smaller file size right and then also you can select where you want to save this i will create a new folder let's call this batch okay so select that folder and now if i apply that i simply click on okay and it's going to run through all of the files in here right now it's just one file but it could also be a hundred or a thousand files right so i click on okay you're not going to see anything uh, other than the you saw a little bit of the timeline running over here and now if i go here to open that file you can see here batch this is my output you can see when I open this up, I have my file and the watermark is applied to that. So that is how easy that is. So now you can always use this overlay with that macro as a batch job to apply to the other images. But like I said, if the image has a smaller resolution, I can show you this also real quick. Let's go over here, open this up and export it as a smaller size. Uh, let's say, for example, 1000 here like this. So let's run this again with the smaller file. 
And when we open this up now, you can see that the text is rather large. So I would suggest simply make another version that is not 10K resolution, but maybe 5K resolution or 2K resolution, depending on how big the pictures are you want to set on your web space or on the online pages where you want to show your images. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye.